Hello, 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 everyone. Mark Buzan here once again from our wonderful co-working uh, space here in Gatineau, Quebec, Canada. Those of you who are uh, new to me and haven't seen this before, my name again is Mark Buzan. I am the founder of the Society of Nonprofit Board Directors. I am also president and founder of our association, our, exec our executive director association management services. Uh, two-time national president and executive director of two national associations and father to a wonderful little five-year-old named Simon. Today, I'm going to be talking about what I call the next biggest thing or the biggest trends I've seen in the last while that I've been monitoring in terms of the sticky wicket issue of what's the role of the CEO or the staff of a non-for-profit association versus the role of the board of directors. I often say that very few times have I ever met, I don't, in fact, I haven't met a single board director who considers themselves a micromanager, who wants to be a micromanager of uh, this, uh, but inevitably because the rules of what and definitions of what governance are and how they play out in these aspects uh, are not always well defined it can often be an area of confusion and conflict. More often than not, it can be easily defied, uh, avoided. So uh, how many of you, if you're interested in knowing more about this subject, uh, please share and, and say, yes, I want to know down in the comments. If you're watching this live, say hashtag it watching live. If you're watching this in the replay, hashtag it while well, replay. And uh, that'd be very much appreciated. Also, because of the way I understand uh, the social media networks work, they love the hearts. They love the hearts far more than the likes. So please, by all means, heart this, share this out and get it out. You'd be helping enormously get the message out of the importance of good leadership at the board level as a means of strengthening the impact of not-for-profits, associations, charities, foundations, everywhere. That is, of course, the mission of the, not of the Society of Nonprofit Board Directors. So uh, just again, for a little bit of your own housekeeping purposes, if you're interested in following us, we're uh, broadcasting live from uh, the Society of Nonprofit Board Directors Facebook page, my own personal profile. If you wish to connect with me, just send me a message as well. Just give me a little bit of context because uh, I, I like to know who, are, who I'm chatting with uh, and saying that you like the, the, what, you, what you're seeing here. That'd be great. We're also broadcasting from Periscope and from YouTube as well, where the recordings are housed. So uh, again, just getting down to uh, the nuts uh, and bolts of the issue here. There are basically, I basically five trends or issues that I've seen in the last while. The importance of uh, all of uh, all this, this subject as it relates to the difference between the roles of the uh, chief of staff, the executive director versus the board of directors and some of the trends that I've been seeing. This is really important because the CEO is the board of directors right hand, freeing up the board of directors to move on to more impactful discussions. And this is so important uh, really from uh, the, the, the point I wanna make is that I see when I see boards getting into the weeds of discussions, they're worried about a line item. They're worried about why pay, their PayPal account won't be working or, or, or set up correctly. Um, you really miss an opportunity for your organization to be thinking big picture and moving on to the next point. Those are the kinds of things, those strategic, those operation, tactical operational issues that your CEO is supposed to be acting upon. Your CEO or your executive director or even also maybe your CEO staff really are the board's uh, strategic part, thought partner. They have the ability to have the foresight of knowing what's been going on in the field and et cetera, and, and in the day-to-day -day operations to be able to effectively counsel the board of directors. 
So the two, the, the, the newest thing that I've seen uh, of, of, of a number of things, and this was actually captured in our last executive round table of the society by uh, nonprofit board directors. If you're interested in that, you can click the link. We'll have that uh, in, in the comments as well. Uh, of, uh, finding out more about our executive round tables. But the first trend one that I'm seeing very often is one, boards are choosing the type of person depending on the, uh, the, uh, where they are in, in the environment where the organization is. And I mean by that person, I mean their executive director. The type of person they need can vary very much. We're able to be acting as that strategic partner. So whether they're in a situation where they need to consider a turnaround situation, they need a type of person for that. If they're looking for somebody, for example, who's just really wants to be able to mind the shop, that's also a type of, a, a type of personality that they're looking out for. If they're looking for somebody who's a little bit more uh, an opportunity to be inward looking and technical, and they're very aware of the skill sets of a given industry, uh, profession, cause, whatever that may be, they're looking for that. And the fourth element, uh, very much what I'm seeing is that they're also looking for uh, those individuals who have the capabilities of being outward relationship builders. So again, the key element here of what I'm seeing is that boards, the highest performing boards are getting clear on the type of personality that they need, the type of executive that they need to be guiding the, uh, the, the board towards its next step or where it, wherever it wants to go. They're getting very clear on what that means as well. And they're setting out the parameters for that. The second turn, uh, trend that I'm seeing is that they're placing a bigger importance on interim roles. This was a really fascinating uh, discussion that we had at our last round table of the Society of Nonprofit Board Directors and early June 2019 here on the subject of how do boards go about choosing that appropriate strategic plan, a strategic partner. And this becomes all the more challenging when in an organization has known an executive director for a lengthy period of time, they've gotten familiar with that person, that person has almost become an institution in one form or another. And then the challenges sometimes come about when they try to institute or find, institute a replacement or put a, a replacement in who is inevitably going to come with a different view on things, that it's difficult to, uh, to, to move towards a, a smooth transition. And one of the, the things that I found very interesting is that some of the highest performing boards are actually moving towards the installation of interim executive directors, whether that's someone internally or someone who's hired out to uh, a, a specific firm. Uh, our executive director uh, uh, association management services offers that interim executive director uh, service as well. But there are a number of other services out there that, that put an executive director or senior staff person in place to manage the transition and manage that organization and manage the expectations of the board towards a new chapter in the organization's life. The third step that I'm seeing is that they are getting more and more specific about defining the roles. Boards are becoming also future oriented as well. That means they're limiting discussion towards quality, growth, finances and people. And what that means as a result is that they're focusing their discussion specifically on those big elements of where the organization is going and then giving broad general direction towards staff as to their overall expectations. And staff as a result have parameters under which to work in, under. Most importantly, the highest performing boards in not-for-profit organizations are looking out for trends, future trends, so that they can guide the direction of the organization and provide input as well as to where the future of a given cause, industry, passion, service, whatever that may be, uh, my, my direction might be going. 
This is so important because I firmly believe, as I'll repeat many times, is that I, I rarely come across a board director who's passionate about getting into the weeds, or as I say as often, I've yet to meet one person who's joined a board because they have a passion for doing the minutes. People join boards of nonprofits, associations, foundations, et cetera, the like, because they want to be part of an intellectually stimulating discussion. They want to be part of a movement. They want to feel that they're having an actual impact. And if your discussions are focused on the bigger, broader issues, I believe firmly you have a better chance of having a higher level of commitment, engagement, involvement, and also a better chance of attracting the best candidates towards the board, not the least of which the best staff as well, executive directors and the like, who want to be part of that movement as well in, in their own career development. The fourth element that I'm seeing or trend I'm seeing is that uh, boards are giving thoughtful reflection on performance, both CEO performance and on the board's performance as well. They're not just simply having a, a, a a straw poll going around in a nice board meeting. So how did you think that went, Bob or Bill? They're genuinely asking themselves and, and through a thoroughly developed process of asking the tough questions of whether or not they were really effective. And on set standards that are fair but challenging of how the performance of the executive director is also performing, performing along. And they're getting help with this as well. The, four, the fifth element that I'm seeing or fifth trend that I'm often seeing is that most importantly, they're mapping out the roles um, and they're seeing that uh, largely in their governance models. Now, often I find enough that the Carver governance model is set as the gold standard for many, many, many organizations. Strict standard that board just fixes on, on one model and while the, the staff fixes on, on another. But the trouble is, is that this is often loosely defined and that the minute that a problem or comes about or a challenge comes about, the board has a natural tendency to get want to, to get into the weeds again. I've identified in a number of resources and the society has put out a resource called that uh, called upping your board's performance without needing a PhD in governance. And we've identified as many as nine different governance models. No one is right, no one is wrong, it really depends. But the ultimate de definition of success is that it's defined clearly and that you're clear on exactly the model that you like. You're interested in finding more about that resource as well, uh, send me a little uh, comments uh, as well. We'll try to see, leave uh, the link uh, for, for that resource as well. Folks, that is all uh, on this. Again, if you're ever interested in partaking in the discussions, we have the live uh, link here down below. You can join us on the Zoom call. Uh, hopefully that you can, all, you can join with us in the future as well in the, in the chats and love to have your participation in all of this. Look us, up, look us up again on Facebook, uh, Society of Nonprofit Board Directors for Periscope under for Mark Buzan, as well as uh, on YouTube as well. So with that, thank you everyone and have a wonderful day.